<laughs> Hello, Robert Tenor from Santo Domingo Pueblo, or Kiwa, as some people know. I prefer Santo Domingo because it's in maps. Kiwa is it, and, uh, but I sign all my pots with Kiwa because it's only four letter, uh, however, four letter word. And uh, anyhow, I started out as a jeweler uh, when jeweler was very popular in Santo Domingo Pueblo. As you all know, that Santo Domingo is more known for jewelry making or the hishi. Hishi is mainly uh, the word for shells, and uh, but everybody now in public uses that word for turquoise or other materials, uh, hishi, turquoise, whatever. Anyhow, uh, so I started out with uh, jewelry making because I've always wanted to help my mom with her um, selling of the jewelry. And so I've been doing Indian market since 1967, uh, or probably early years, but my first ribbon was in 1967 for a mosaic uh, shell that I've done. But anyhow, um, when I went to school in Santa Fe, the Institute of American Indian Arts, I took up jewelry again, silver jewelry with uh, Loloma, Charles Loloma. I did not take up uh, ceramics because I did not know what the word ceramic meant. And uh, every during class times, I would uh, the instructor or Atelier Loloma um, would find me in the ceramic studio or in the jewel rather than the jewelry studio, and it was her that uh, caught me making a bowl or pot. She says you need to be in ceramic studios or ceramic class. So it was her that rearranged my classes, and there I was, and uh, where I, I really wanted to be was uh, uh, with clay, because I had started making clay also or pottery with my grandmother when I was around maybe her age, maybe younger, playing in mud, and my grandma would allow me to uh, make uh, small pieces, uh, so-called tourist item then, things that we would sell for a dime, a quarter. My grandmother never knew uh, $10 or all, all her prices were 50 cents, 75 cents. When we sold one for her for $20, she says, that's too much. How much, grandma? Dada. <laughs> Anyhow, so, uh, so I started in, um, at the Institute of American Indian Arts uh, Stoneware, hand coiling, and then I, I got interested in uh, throwing on the wheel, so I learned how to throw on the wheel. And then uh, competition-wise, uh, we used to send uh, pottery to the Hurt Museum and also to Scottsdale, Arizona. My first ribbon ever was from the Hurt Museum again in 1968 with 50 whole dollars, and then it was a lot of money. My mom somehow found out she came to Santa Fe. We cashed the check, we had dinner, she had bought groceries and five dollars back to me for school spending. <laughs> and then when I tried to enter a stoneware at Indian Market, it was not acceptable because it was stoneware, it was not traditional. And uh, so about two years later, I did uh, set up in front of Packard's and I still have the Navajo rock that I used to display my uh, stoneware. And again, at the time, I wasn't really required to have a booth. You can set up any place, and judges would just walk around and uh, do their judging. And all of a sudden, one of the judges noticed my uh, San Domingo uh, patterns on stoneware. Strange. Uh, and uh, they told me that I should start doing uh, San Domingo style. And I told him while well, I was still in school learning other methods and all. So after graduation, I went back home, and my grandmother, I give accreditation to, and it was her that uh, got me started in the um, Pueblo pottery things. And uh, well, going back again, to, uh, in the years at IAIA, I made a lot of stew bowls, things that they would use at the Pueblo, and uh, the ladies were all excited over the stone uh, wear, uh, stoneware bowls. My mom was selling bowls to the ladies down in the village to live in Canada served their chilies in. So that's what kept me going, it was just uh, chili bowls. And then when I got home after graduation from IAIA, um, they uh, supplied me with a wheel, and I went out and got my own place from the hills, surrounding hills that Grandma also showed me and all. And that clay does not work on the wheel. I tried uh, pulling on the wheel. It doesn't have what they call plasticity, so I had to go back to coiling and uh, molding or uh, the, the um, pinch pot method. Grandma showed me how to do the elbow pinch pot bolts. She would use her uh, elbow to shape up the bow form and then we would do the pinch work. And anyhow, so Grandma gets all the credit. This uh, Grandma is from my father's side. 
the grandmother from my mom's side was a great potter, but I did not get to know her. She passed on when I was maybe about five years old, but she was a great potter. She did huge pots, storage jars, and dough bowls that I still see some at uh, San Felipe Pueblo and other pueblos uh, who, where my grandpa would uh, go trading for food rather than money. Back then it was uh, traded among other pueblos for food rather than money because there was no place to spend the money. And then, uh, so Indian market was really a great big part for me. They started noticing my pots that I was actually starting to use uh, traditional methods and uh, materials, and which up to today I still use that materials. And I like to correct Bruce uh, that um, he said that load up the truck with uh, the, she, uh, she the spinach or whatever, <laughs> but not make paint, but we do make paint with the spinach. But I wish it would be a whole truck load because uh, my, I get mine in the early spring when they're nice and young, about a, a foot long. They're good as spinach form. I'd rather eat than paint with it. <laughs> now the juices from the actual uh, plant juice is the only thing I use. From Santo Domingo, we have a clay slip that is uh, used between Sa uh, Coach Tan and Santo Domingo. And it's the only clay slip that will turn any kind of plant juices black. And so I've gotten away from uh, the spinach plant. I can now boil uh, cactus, the prickly pear, prune juice, um, beets. recently peas, beets, red beets. And it all turns black on our clay. For some reason, I've tried uh, the plant juices on other white materials, other white clay slips from other pueblos, and it just doesn't seem to work for me. My paint is not black when I'm painting the pots, so I don't really have control over it. I don't have perfect lines, I don't have uh, tiny lines, because uh, our paints are just bulky, so it's always uh, bulk designs. and. And if I do make a mistake, I would have to expand the pattern to a different shape or uh, a different uh, pattern or uh, into a bird or a leaf, <coughs> and which will then be unnoticeable when I do fire. And uh, the paint only turns black in the firing. And I have done, I've been doing a lot of public firing so that people can actually see the changes in the firing. And um, it's amazing how uh, I can do a whole change within an hour, hour and a half. And so you're all welcome or to come see my firing if you ever get a chance, call me up. And just uh, to really show you that I still do use grandmother's methods. And I do not use any cow chips or countdown. I tell people before, uh, Spanish people, there was no such thing as cows. Mm -hmm. So I use cottonwood barks. Uh, early years, it was all fired with uh, wood or cottonwood. Cotton is the only thing that we have along the Rio Grande from all the way from Colorado down to Mexico. So I do have, we do have a lot of uh, supply <coughs> of the cottonwood barks. But I'm always in need. I don't go to go get it. Uh, people will come and uh, sell me though. And the other thing is that um, the spinach plant juice in a in an electric kiln, it burns off. It turns white rather than black. I've tried it because I, because I, I have done firing so with uh, stoneware and uh, spools, so I know how to control things. And our white, the white slip, the magic white slip that I call it, turns back into terracotta uh, rather than white. So it does need the air going through when uh, we're firing. So, um, and then also in the firing part, I know it's supposed to be traditional, but nowadays I use uh, little uh, metal crates to uh, hold the pots up, and also melt crates, the steel melt crates that I will use so that the wood will not touch the pots. Uh, it keeps it from, uh, from, oh, from uh, the, the wood falling over the pots. Now, early years, grandmothers didn't have any of the control of the uh, uh, wood or the firing because they didn't really have much of the metal thing, so Early pots will have a lot of fire scales or smoke pots and all. And today, uh, just like Lonnie B. Hill, his, uh, I say his firing is, uh, you can do that kind of a firing without any, uh, how would I put it? I, I would say it's an easier firing because everything turns. 
smoky or whatever. For us at uh, home, our from Santo Domingo, we, we need to control that white or uh, get the colors coming through, so we should try not to have any of the wood touching the pots. But there are times that the wood will uh, escape and get out to the pots, and there are times I will have fire escapes and all. So every firing is different, and um, I think Bruce has seen our firing, and a lot of people have uh, experienced my firing, and please, by all means, if you like to come see one. Just like uh, this lady here, I'm not, um, I do not hide or I do not uh, keep it a secret as to how I create my pottery because I, I do too learn it from my grandmother. But I do not teach pottery making because that's one of grandmother's rules is pottery is not meant to be taught. You only learn by observing and watching. And as of today, uh, my niece's uh, husband is a Navajo, a Diné, and he has learned every uh, every step of pottery making just by watching or just being around us. He used to just help us with the uh, firing part. He's good at cleaning up and uh, <laughs> setting up the firings and all, but uh, nowadays we have him uh, firing for us, or uh, he, he knows how to mix clays and all. So him and my niece are now both working with pottery. And um, I like to also say that I did say earlier that um, my paints are not black. And so I envy some of the people or potters, their uh, paints are already black, they have the control. With my spinach uh, or the plant juices that I use, I, not, I say plant juices because um, anything that works, I just put it into one container and thanks to uh, Tupperware or all the plasticware, I can now save it in a refrigerator. Early years, my grandmother taught me how to uh, make it into a paste form and wrap it up in a corn husk. That was always a mess. But anyhow, um, I've got lots of juices from uh, the Pueblo people because they do uh, tend to cook a lot of the uh, spinach in the early, uh, early springtime. So the ladies are usually bringing me gallons and gallons of uh, the juices because they, knew, they know that I do use the, the spinach and all. And um, so, um, with, with my paints, I really don't have control doing extra fine lines or uh, I have to fire my potter within the third day. Uh, so I have to finish painting within the third day. After the third day, the uh, plant juices just disappear. It doesn't really come through. And the watery the paints are, the blacker it shows up. If the paint gets thicker, the uh, paint doesn't really adhere into the um, clays, so it doesn't really come out as black. So I've seen a lot of older pots, San Domingo and Costa style, that sometimes their paints are a little uh, light or grayish color. That's when the paints get too thick. And um, just uh, two weeks ago, uh, I had uh, some students uh, at the Indian school from each Pueblo, um, they uh, created pottery uh, with my uh, clays and all. And I did to tell them that I will not teach you, but I will show you. So I showed them how to mix clays and the paints, and uh, they got to uh, fire their own pottery uh, with me at home in Santo Domingo. And I told them, you have just recreated what your grandparents created or our ancestors created. Your pots have that good old thousand-year-old look out of the firing. And uh, today I have my nieces, my two nieces that are working with me, or uh, they, they have their own uh, pottery where we're going. So I do have other fi families and other people, just like um, she mentioned, people will want to learn how to make pottery, and I, I always invite you to come and watch me. I cannot teach you, but you can come and watch me. No one ever comes around. And then firing part, I like to see her firing. Nobody ever comes out. But from people from your tribe, they come down and see firing. And I love it because when I do fire pottery to the public, uh, they, they buy whatever I fire. <laughs> Thank you.